Hoffman, chers collègues. Uh, if you allow us, we are starting our round table. Our colleagues, please take your seats, do sit down. It's a real pleasure that to have so many people, so many faces here. And I remind you that you have simultaneous translation from what I understand. Let's uh, give everyone some time to put on their headphones. Dear friends, together with plenipotentiary ambassador of the Russian Federation, Oleg Borisovich Pozorov, will act today as moderators for you in order so that one of the goals of our second uh, interparliamentary conference, Russia Africa, would be achieved so that each and every one of you present in this very room for yourself would learn something new, would take out some solutions or decisions which uh, you will be able to take home to safely arrive and which you'll be later be able to implement. The topic of this round table is as relevant as can be. It uh, regards security in the widest, in the broadest possible range. And we know that uh, our life in general is struggle for safety and security. And our, it's our duty as members of parliament to ensure the safety of our voters. The, we're talking about struggle against terrorism, about the safety of state institutions, about personal safety, about cyber security and cyber safety. And today, we will discuss all of the aforementioned topics, the challenges that our friends from African countries are facing, the challenges that are there today now in the Russian Federation to a large extent are similar. The world is rapidly changing. And in this new world, we want for justice to exist, for equal rights to be, and for multipolarity to occur. So that's why today our conversation is uh, becoming more and more relevant. Dear colleagues, Oleg Borisovich and I were offered to start this discussion, to open a round table with lengthy speeches and presentations, but we decided not to do so. We decided against it in regards to the fact that we know that we have to finish at 7, because our guests from African countries today have an incredible evening awaiting them, Moscow by night, cruise. So we have lots of speakers who would like to speak, and I want to address each and every one of you sitting in this very room who would like to speak today with a, uh, with a dedicated request, please. In regards to the huge number of people who would like to speak, limit your presentation to five minutes. If we don't stick to this timing, then uh, we are not, then we'll not be able to speak all of them. It's very important so that all the points of view, all the views on safety and security would be reflected today within the, during our round table. Do you mind against this timing? So we start. Uh, do you want to say a couple words? Yes, thank you very much. Petr Legovic, dear guests, of course. We are really glad to see you all here, to welcome you here, because we've been uh, considering this parliamentary conference as a very important step, as a preliminary stage to hosting a grandiose, a large-scale second forum, Russia, Africa, that is planned to the display on July 26, 28, and even 29th of July in St. Petersburg. And of course, we expect and uh, await all the delegations from the African countries in order to review all the sum, the, to review the sum of the issues that were briefly voiced by Petr Olegovich. And first of all, this rapidly happening process of reformatting the whole, the, the entire system of international relations and, this, and building this new world model in which we offer the African countries to take the most active kind of participation, new world, just world, fair world. There will be no dictatorship. There will be no imposement of uh, one, of the only one correct point of view. Because in this world, there is a multitude of countries, a multitude of continents and civilizations, each with their own outlook on the world. And of course, we're talking about the fact that the African continent nowadays represents a rising force, a rising power that for sure will have more and more importance in this new world order. And we're not only talking about the fact that Africa has 25% of the United Nations vote. 
We're also talking about the fact that Africa is preparing for an entirely new stage in its development, a stage that will combine two main processes. The first process is strengthening national sovereignty. And here, Russian Federation fully stands on the position of our African friends, because we are interested in the fact that every country would have its own vote, would not be subject to dictated opinions from the outside, and would work on its stance in the international arena on its own, because we are convinced. And, and as uh, Mr. Tolstoy has rightly said, we have a multitude of shared interests. And first of all, those that regard security, that is a very multifaceted term. And the key to strengthening safety is undoubtedly strengthening sovereignty. The second dimension of safety and security for sure becomes the strengthening of integration processes on the African continent. And we are already seeing how now, gradually, step by step, the continent is passing the stages, the stages of integration. Starting from 2022, African continental zone of free trade has started separation. We see that sub-regional integration, all the alliances and unions play a bigger and bigger role. And we're convinced that these two processes that complement each other will lead to the situation that where Africa, in the foreseeable future that we are already seeing, will shape out to be a very powerful force on the international arena, and of course, we are interested in, first of all, helping this uh, focus of power to strengthen and to come to life, and secondly, to acquire r r to acquire friends, friends in African countries. You know, Af Russia has always been a friend to Africa and vice versa. And here we also need to take a look at other sides, other aspects of safety and security. And I think that today we will discuss them, Quare matters of counter-terrorism on an international level where we fully support uh, African countries in fighting this international evil. These are matters of food safety where Russia has its own advantages, has its own strong sides, and it is, as uh, yesterday our president has said, visiting Mariupol, that we are becoming, sorry, he said it in one of the, in an interview that Russia has become the biggest grain producer in the world, and we are ready to help African countries in not only satisfying their needs through Russian grain imports, but also in order to develop your own competencies. There are challenges in safety related to climate change. Of course, this is a very important issue, because here there are a multitude of challenges that African countries are facing, and Russia has its own answers to these challenges. And uh, finally, these are biohazards and bioemergencies. You know how United States and their partners create all over the world, and including in the African continents, biolaboratories that do not allow uh, that do not allow even the authorities and the government of these countries. For sure, these issues, these complex questions, they need us to discuss them today in order uh, in order so that for the summit that will happen in St. Petersburg, we will, we will already have a clearer understanding of the challenges and threats that we face and with a clear vision of how we are going to solve them. So we start our roundtable. Dear colleagues, I would like to give the floor to Mr. Usman Buguma, chairman of the Burkina Faso Legislative Union of Transitional Period. Mr. Buguma, please, you have the floor. Mesdames et Messieurs, <coughs> chers membres du Parlement, je voudrais tout d'abord vous remercier pour... Euh, Uh, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak at this forum before, uh, in, in front of such uh, a large audience. Allow me to express my gratitude to Mr. Chairman of the Duma, Vyacheslav Volodin, uh, who gave me the honors of inviting me to this forum. And I would like to give you 
a, well, a, a word of welcome from the whole uh, people of Burkina Faso and uh, from our president, Mr. Traore. <laughs> people of Burkina Faso, as our, uh, just like our brothers from Mali, are fighting, uh, are fighting against uh, terrorist groups. This is one of the biggest challenges in our country. This is where the topic of our of my presentation comes from. I will speak about the indistributable opportunity to for the par for the parliament members to make a commitment to this cause. This is a very this is a topic that interests our country greatly and our region in particular. Safety and security is the key issue for all the countries. Here we are talking about physical, economical, social security, environmental security, and safety. Safety and security is a necessary prerequisite for long-term development of the world and its flourishing. For such countries as Burkina Faso, safety has vital significance. Not a single nation can achieve complete safety and security on its own, individually. Actually, safety and security does not exist in an unsafe and unsecure environment. That is why safety requires a global approach. Safety is an Indistri indistributable good. This is a common good, and this is for collective actions uh, and international cooperation and partnership. And uh, now we understand the significance that parliaments and importance that parliaments play in these regards. Actually, uh, parliament members are representatives of the people, and we need to promote the will of the people. In order to do so, the, par the parliament members uh, monitor so that the politics, politicians, and the program for development that uh, are developed and implemented by the government, so that these programs meet the requirements, demands, and expectations of the people. This is especially true regarding the current situation of the sub Saharan region. Parliament members have to make sure that the government works for their sake to satisfy their priority needs of, of the people in terms of safety and security. This is the uh, first expectation that our population has in order to fulfill this very important mission. Parliaments have several means to do so using their authorities. The parliaments can work in four directions, in four areas. First of all, I would like to speak about the assessment of policies and safety and security of parliaments. Parliaments have the opportunities to study and learn and to give their overview in terms of the policy of safety and security offered by the governments uh, to make sure that these policies fully meet the demands of the people and are compliant with the statutes of international law. Parliament members can also make their own commitment in improving uh, the management ability in uh, safety and security by implementing their monitoring and function of oversight, oversight of military expenses and other budgets aimed at providing safety and security and also taking note that these resources would be used efficiently. Second point that I would like to make, I would like to understand the importance of international cooperation. Fundamentally, uh, in uh, international relationships, what uh, this area can allow us to solve a large number of problems, and parliament members can play a very significant role in this. Thus, interparliamentary exchange in discussing matters of safety and security, partnership and cooperation with regional and international organizations, acting as platforms for exchange of best practices, uh, of experience exchange, which all can facilitate coming up with acting uh, offers on this. Uh, it also can facilitate solving conflicts with the use of uh, with the use of subsidiaries and the government of Burkina Faso, the government of 
Mali and Kenya understand this opportunity. This is in, it's in this key that the government uh, of the Federation develops uh, its work. And I, I would like to once again thank the Speaker of Russia State Doom, uh, Mr. Slavolodin, for getting, granting us the opportunity to participate in this amazing conference. The third point that I would like to underline uh, to strengthen citizen participation and in reality uh, throughout the citizen and state initiatives of various, of various features, parliaments can facilitate the participation of citizens in joint decision making regarding safety by organizing. Uh, by organizing public hearings, by holding these debates and consultations with the participants of this process, uh, parliaments could also facilitate uh, strengthening uh, the participation of women and men, and uh, they can facilitate creating these policies in Burkina Faso and our uh, Protocol provides for the operation of a bureau of citizens that uh, are designed to encourage the participation of uh, of population and management. The fourth point is I would like to speak about uh, preventing conflicts, about promoting uh, world, and in these moments, parliaments can play a key role. And, and to prevent uh, this, we can also facilitate, uh, we can facilitate choices that are not uh, violence related by developing the dialogue between two countries and uh, the parliaments can support initiatives uh, in conflict prevention by analyzing the underlying root causes. We can facilitate struggle against poverty, impoverishment, inequality, discrimination, instability, and marginalization. I would like to change, I would like to paraphrase the quote of Lenin in the world based on, in the world based on the power of money, on the money, power of capital, when a handful of rich could only act as parasites, the majority uh, lives in impoverishment uh, in the real uh, uh, environment of safety. Regarding us, uh, to conclude my presentation, I would like to address you with a request to take part in, um, in safety and security all over the world. I would like uh, to encourage you to jointly work uh, in fighting uh, the, the difficulties that we are facing now, the terrorist uh, menace. The world is uh, the world in this is the prologue to the world to is the prologue to global safety and security. And as I've said before, uh, we calculate oh, and we count on the work of the parliaments of our countries, we rely on the operation of the Russian State Duma, the one the one that can play the, a big part and a big role in joint actions and activities and international cooperation that could uh, facilitate achieving, achieving safety and security and our parliaments can facilitate uh, safety and security all over the world. Uh, hello, to, and let's uh, once again say Hail uh, to our parliamentary interaction. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Buguma. I think you've said very important words about solidarity. So when we talk about solidarity, of course, we support your approach. And um, taking into account the uh, security, the position of Russia is quite understandable. African program, African problems uh, should uh, be dealt with uh, by African solutions to these problems, and uh, we are absolutely for resolving these issues together. And now I'd like to give the floor to the first vice uh, head of uh, the um, 
State uh, of the Council of Federation uh, for International Affairs, and I'd like to ask all of our participants to stick to the time limits. Uh, thank you very much. Dear colleagues, uh, dear friends, the Russian Federation thinks uh, that uh, international security is absolutely undivisible, and uh, we think it is necessary to support it on the principle of uh, working together. Russia is interested in uh, forming a new infrastructure of uh, regional and international security with all other states which are interested in this procedure, including African countries. In order to create international security, Russian Federation is aimed at uh, putting an emphasis on the first thing, uh, the strategic uh, stability. Secondly, dealing with uh, the possibilities of nuclear war and other types of mass destruction. Secondly, dealing with the diplomatic uh, representations uh, of other countries in order to avoid uh, different kinds of wars, including different types of avoiding the decisions of the, of, uh, the Security Council of uh, the UN, which is granted by the Article 51 of the UN Charter 3. We should think that we should neutralize the attempts of other states to achieve a global domination in uh, the um, in the military activity and uh, trying to get all the responsibility for the world and its security, drawing different kind of red lines and so on. And uh, the fourth point is that we would like to take all the necessary measures in order to n not to let other countries to get into the affairs of other states, unconstitutional type of turnover of power, and uh, the uh, any problems with the sovereignty. Russia is against all types of new colonialism in the international relations. So we are completely into the uh, support of um, bilateral, multilateral agreements. Uh, according to the uh, fact that we have all the necessary of all the necessary resources, we are, would like to be one of the centers of the multipolar world. We are very much concerned about uh, the reactivation of the terrorist attacks uh, on the African continent in the, the region of Sahel. There are too many conditions for the restoration of IGIL and Al-Qaeda and the original, the original organizations do too much work in order to react uh, to the situation in these countries, and they're also trying to destroy the situation, which is not uh, related to politics itself. Moreover, we can see that these uh, terrorist attacks are getting more and more active in the, in the other parts of the African uh, continent, including Niger and uh, Nigeria, and uh, they also influence the activity of such uh, organizations as Boko Haram. We think it is necessary to pay attention to the regions of Mali and Niger, where we can see the representations of uh, IGIL and other countries. We also should uh, draw attention to the fact there are too many pirate attacks uh, near African borders, uh, so we are very much interested in participating in um, the form of international cooperation in uh, the uh, seas near the boundaries of the African continent in order to help our militaries in uh, the seas of Africa. Russia thinks it is necessary to give all the help to the uh, countries of the African continent uh, according to the resolutions taken by the UN uh, Security Council. We should uh, do it in order to counteract the actions taken by the Western countries. We should draw our own red lines and uh, develop the cooperation between the states in order to ensure a better security in the world. The principal 
of our activity is acting together with the African states. And finally, I'd like to say that according to the initiatives of the Russian Federation and following the resolution of the UN of 2019, we've created a special committee of experts in order to develop a new convention struggling with the crime in the in the internet and the final project of the convention should be presented to you for this session of the UN in 2024. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to invite the the head of the National Assembly of the Parliament of South Africa, Ms. Mapisan Kakula, please. Uh, you are one of our allies in BRICS and we are very much waiting for your cooperation and for your talk here. Thank you very much. The floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon, colleagues. I'd like to start by thanking the speaker of Duma for the invite and check and thank all the organizers of this conference. Thank you for hosting us. This for us is a platform for ongoing exchange between our continent and the people of the Russian Federation. This engagement follows on a rich history of solidarity and cooperation characterized by decades of continued support you have given to the freedom and development of the people of our continent. You also welcome the opportunity, therefore, to be part of this session to share our views on the important topic, on the role of parliaments which can play to foster indivisible security across the globe. Honorable Chairperson, the devastation of the COVID-19 global pandemic over the past four years has undoubtedly left us with a changed world. But most importantly, it also presented a true test of the world's capacity for real human solidarity and cooperation amongst nations of the world. I'm raising this fully cognizant of the fact that COVID-19 exposed the divides amongst ourselves. It exposed that we had in fact something called vaccine nationalization, where countries of the African continent were deprived of the opportunity to secure IP so that they could produce their own vaccines. As millions of people lost their lives and livelihoods all over the world, many powerful nations chose to place national interest over human solidarity, creating an additional threat to human security. Now, the continuing global challenges of global climate change, endemic poverty, violence, and human rights abuses continue to be caused to cause major threats to world peace, to our security, to our economic development, peaceful coexistence amongst the citizens of the world. As the world economies emerge and start on a journey of recovery, from the global pandemic, prospects of our changing world are less optimistic, and now more than ever is needed a spirit of human solidarity, cooperation, and friendship. South Africa's entire foreign policy is anchored on the principle of diplomacy of Ubuntu. To paraphrase, to paraphrase the emblem of, the pol of this policy, we have chosen the concept of Ubuntu, meaning humanity, to define who we are and how we relate to others, the idea that we affirm our humanity 
when we affirm the humanity of others. South Africa, since 1994, the international community has looked at us and have looked at us as we try and navigate our way into playing a leading role in championing the values of human rights, democracy, reconciliation, and eradication of poverty and underdevelopment in our continent. Now, the unique approach to global issues, including in diplomacy and security, continues to shape our vision for a better world. In the context of indivisible collect or collective international security, South Africa's approach to international relations recognizes that one, it is our national interest, it is in our national interest to promote and support the positive development of others. Similarly, national security will therefore depend on the centrality of human security as a universal goal based on the principle of Ubuntu, Ubuntu and Batupili, Batupili meaning putting people first. That means that South Africa will always strive to contribute to efforts for universal peace and to encourage all nations of the world to recognize the benefits of indiv indivisible and shared collective security. Our parliament is already playing an important role, firstly in ensuring that our own country in its policies and international relations adheres to the promotion of this idea. Secondly, we continue to scrutinize both bilateral and multilateral agreements and threats, of course, to our security. Now, as we therefore move to engage in bilateral and multilateral uh, in agreements, we scrutinize all the time because we must be ensured that in bilateral agreements, there has to be mutual respect, there has to be respect for our sovereignty. Now, this is an important role for parliaments as institutions that represent the collective aspirations of the people to hold governments accountable for goals aimed at achieving and maintaining global peace. This is because it is in the interest of the aspirations of the people of the world to have a peaceful coexistence a necessary, as necessary condition for human development and prosperity. For us, the establishment of the African Union as a successor to the OAU, as well as the constitution of the Pan-African Parliament, has given us an institutional infrastructure that can allow the continent's needs for these collaborative efforts. We intend to strengthen further the capacity of the Pan-African Parliament to exercise its oversight to support peace initiatives across all governments. So for us, the importance of multilateral institution can never be underestimated. And I think I would want to take this opportunity to call on all of us, our brothers, our sisters, to continue to support the African continent in its call for the reform of the National Security Council. Without that, we can never talk about a peaceful world. We in the African continent have had enough of those who come in and because they have veto powers, they then tend to ignore deliberately issues which impact negatively on the people of our continent. Now, this is work which as parliament we must take interest in. Earlier on, I was talking to somebody and I was saying, for me, the most important thing about parliament is oversight. It is to force government as well to go into partnership because there can only be collaboration amongst countries in order for us to achieve what is best for the people of the world. 
So our country remains available to share our experiences of negotiating an end to conflict and if needed to form part of efforts to facilitate dialogue for a mutually beneficial end to even the current conflict. I speak with authority and pride because I happen to be part of a team of the Interparliamentary Union, no matter its challenges, which has the responsibility of bringing together parliaments of Ukraine, parliamentarians of Ukraine, and parliamentarians of Russia. And I think that dialogue can assist, if taken seriously by everybody, and if the egos and the pride of, of, of leadership in general could be put aside, there is great potential. There is light at the end of the tunnel. I believe that with this mediation efforts, we will end this conflict. How long it will take, I don't know. The tendency is for all of us to start talking about this conflict as though it started in March last year and not go back to the history of this area and how the conflict started. I thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Matpilas Kakula. She shared with us very important ideas about humanity and solidarity, and we are sure this is one of the key priorities in solving problems. And uh, the second point uh, that she mentioned about the necessity of respecting international treaties, as uh, in Latin we say it, pacta sum servanta, which means that all the treaties should be respected. And when the articles of this treaty are violated, it is one of the reasons uh, why we have the situation in Ukraine. According to the Minsk agreements that were concluded later, uh, that were concluded earlier, they are now not respected, and uh, many of our European partners now open um, now openly discuss this fact. I would now like to give the floor to Ms. Piskaryov, the um, head of the Committee of the State Duma on a Security and Anti-Corruption Activity and he will talk uh, about his uh, experience in this sphere. Thank you very much, dear um, ladies and gentlemen, dear participants of today's uh, conference. Um, let me um, welcome you all uh, on behalf of the Committee of the State Duma on Security and uh, Anti-Corruption Activity, and I hope uh, that uh, you will like your stay in uh, in, uh, Sun, um, in Sunshed, Moscow, and uh, so you will have another opportunity to meet us in St. Petersburg, in the city that we call our second capital. And getting back to the topic of our conference, I think uh, that you would agree that uh, indivisive uh, safety is uh, the basis of uh, today's multipolar world. And uh, this is a system when all international relations are based on respect, mutual respect and trust between the countries, when we do not try to press other countries and do not interfere in their internal affairs according to the principles of uh, the Charter of the UN. Moreover, today we can see different other threats. The most serious ones are the ignoring of uh, a group of states uh, with uh, the um, United States of America of uh, the basic uh, principles and the use of sanctions, uh, the violating of uh, sovereignty of other states. The countries of Africa have uh, lived through the time of colonialism and are now dealing with their own sovereignty that they're trying to protect. We are absolutely in the consensus with these of your ideas. Russia, in difference to other Western countries, has never been a colonial, colonial country, and we have always tried to create uh, good relationships between our countries that are based on mutual respect and trust. We have been working a lot on uh, counteracting international interference into the sovereignty of Russian Federation, and we are ready to share our experience with our colleagues 
and uh, with all those people who are really interested in counteracting counteracting this interference. We work a lot with the parliamentaries, uh, parliamentarians of other states and uh, we prepare our proposals on how we can react to external threats. I think the most important ones are the threats uh, of the interference and the active uh, action of um, the Western countries trying to pull them into different kind of activities that are harmful for their health and lives uh, using the internet and other technologies. And uh, the most uh, important uh, threat here is uh, the growth of uh, international terrorist attacks, uh, the drug, uh, the use of drug, the use of uh, mass uh, destruction weapons and other kind of weapons. And Russia has a unique experience and unique practices in counteracting terrorist attacks and uh, drug dealing, which can be used also on the African continent. The commission of our parliament that deals with the investigation of biolabs on, in uh, Europe managed to find some, uh, no, some uh, information about 30 labs uh, in, uh, on the territory of Ukraine and more than 100 labs on the territory of the whole world where they deal with uh, the creation of uh, potential mass destruction weapons and uh, the agents of mass destruction. We are also very much uh, interested in uh, defeating this kind of activity. And uh, we can see that uh, such uh, diseases as Ebola, coronavirus, uh, vir Zika virus, and others become uh, the proofs of such activity of the Western states. As far as we know, more than tw 220 million people die today in the world of uh, the infectious diseases. So people are absolutely not protected against the threats of Pentagon. And uh, the um, propaganda of Western countries are trying to explain to everybody that otherwise, without their help, without the help of the United States of America, European and Ukraine, Ukraine uh, will not be able to develop their social security system and the, their health care. And we are ready to give you an opportunity to do it with us without being under pressure of the Pentagon. We are ready today to work together to develop our cooperation with the African states in the sphere of medical technologies on a common ground and absolutely impartially from each other. We are also ready to unite the efforts of our peoples in order to present our views on the international platforms, including the platform of UN and uh, the use of uh, different kind of convention, uh, conventions which allow us not to stock toxic uh, and other kinds of weapons and of their destruction. I think that today, the role of the parliament is not only to perfectionate our legislature, but also to form a common uh, views for intergovernmental cooperation in order to improve the stability and uh, security between our states. Our main idea is uh, to keep the uh, to keep the friendship between our peoples even during the most difficult times of history without paying attention to any Russophobia and uh, this kind of uh, this kind of action of the Western countries. We are into creating a new ground for our cooperation, for mutual trust. I wish all of you lots of success and our peoples, I wish peace and uh, flourishing in the future world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Vasily Ivanovich. Now we we'll give the floor to Mr. Kurma Tansa, Chairman of the National Council of Traditional Period of Guinea Republic, Head of Guinean Delegation. Dear colleagues, please stick to the regimen, otherwise we'll not be able to give everyone the opportunity to speak.
Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. I'll try to be brief, and I even guarantee this, because everything else has already been said by the previous speakers. I will not uh, return to the role of parliament that has already been mentioned about the role that uh, governments play in providing safety and security. And uh, I would like to use this opportunity to, 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 from the name of my country to thank the Russian people, its government, and the Russian parliament for inviting to participate in this forum. Uh, taking into account the modern global context and the context of our continent, uh, which sees lots of uh, tense stress points present, I would like to make an accent on the connections that exist between safety and security and the uh, balance that exists in international relationships. To me, what is quite obvious now is that we have to uh, we have to agree with the existing disbalance in international relationships that where single uh, where single side approach became a rule and became the only uh, motive that's being promoted in this regard and context it's very important to take into account and to respect sovereignty of the government but sovereignty in the context of an overall lack of uh, la lack of safety and regarding Africa, and I'll speak more about our continent. Uh, colonization is not only the old memories, it's not only old memories, it's, of course, we'll, we'll remember that it was done, uh, that there were also some in struggles for independence, but also the tools that are uh, in the hands of uh, colonial uh, device became the bad management of the governments that pushes people back to poverty and dependency. That is why it's very important to consider this context with care, because the poverty that arises from poor management of our resources creates uh, the condition for lack of uh, safety and security because the people who have no access to a minimum needed uh, volume of services don't feel themselves in say don't feel themselves that they're safe and secure the members and participants of the forum will constantly talk about safety but it's in uh, this character is cannot be separated from the global economic progress to me the global solidarity is the obvious necessity in order to achieve it so it's very important so that the solidarity is not only limited with exchange of diplomatic mail there also has to be some solidarity based on technologies exchange, and we can upload data from the web, but you, we can't upload it to the technologies. For, and for this, you need to have will of the countries to partner outside the framework of any uh, opinions to not facilitate the independence and sovereignty of every country, every people for long term. It is very extremely important to note, uh, to conclude my presentation, that safety, just as lack of safety, never is isolated because they can't counteract solidarity of the world. That is why international partnership that goes farther than uh, political ideas can facilitate solving this problem. So, uh, glory to the international partnership and cooperation based on merits and human value. We don't have to refuse the things that make us human. The values and rights that are inseparable from the notion of being a human. Dear participants of the forum, we see the multitude stress points all across the world. Uh, battles, fights against terrorism in sub-Saharan region, the verbal escalation and threats that uh, some participants send to others today, we celebrate the necessity to strengthen the trust, 
to strengthen what suffered last uh, year. And I think it's extremely important to give new to give new movement, uh, new advances to an international partnership based on transferring, compet transferring competences on international partnership. Dear ladies and gentlemen, before I conclude my presentation, I would like to once again thank the organizers of this meeting because when uh, parliament members that represent different countries get together, it gives the opportunity to find new solutions to exchange experience. That is why these relationships, these connections that unite us, uh, waiting on the meetings of uh, the chairs of the government and heads of uh, countries will allow us to evaluate with all due, with all due importance the development of our relationships. Uh, glory to the international cooperation that abides the, that abides the rights of all the participants. Thank you very much. Uh, we fully agree with you that uh, we can't have safety and security without the development, without uh, that the people have the necessary minimum provided to them. Without it, it uh, without it, poverty is the source, the root cause for terrorism and extremism. And I would also like to give the word to head Bashkin Alexander Davidic, uh, center of the Russian Federation, a representative of the Aztec region in uh, Soviet Federation, so you have the floor. Good evening, dear colleagues. Good evening. Taking into account today's uh, forum that we all work in together, I'm sh I now believe in the prospects of joint work and implementing by the parliament members of our countries the agenda that we share related to provision of food safety and security, safety and security in social health, uh, uh, battle against terrorism, against narc against drug trafficking, and solving other problems. A brief, the brief schedule to have limits me in the opportunity to only touch one side of uh, this of safety and security which is biosafety and biosecurity uh, also strengthening uh, the imposing of the convention on the ban of uh, bioweapons i would call them and it becomes very important uh, in the factors of uh, military and biological activity that conducted by the united states of america in various regions of the world and uh, african continent included uh, getting the agents and violence uh, that can be used for the goals that are incompatible with safety and security of the uh, go government and nations that host. And this activity is high risk. Uh, and let's say the US carries out an Africa project, which is path pathogen genomic initiative aimed at identifying the specifics of uh, hemorrhagic fever and making a genome map. It's very important that these programs are funded not by civil uh, agencies, but by structures of Pentagon, agents of uh, threat reduction, or or reader institution. The results of their work are then sent to the United Na to the United States of America. The specialists they have no access to it. And there is nothing bad in the fact that one state, one government, one nation tries to help one another in researching dangerous uh, infections. But please, we colleagues agree that uh, this is uh, done for the sake of the country and the society. And it's bad that very often they export out of the country very sensitive materials, including genetic and other biological specimen. As a result of blocking by Washington from 2001, the development of legally binding protocol uh, by the Convention and uh, Control of uh, Biological Activities in the United States of America, it's not possible. And uh, this causes concern the use of some outbreaks of infectious diseases in African countries, which, by, uh, w w which is related uh, to the biological activities of the United States. Uh, states of America. So these outbreaks of Ebola in Uganda in 2022 could be a result of activities on the territory of the countries. The 
scientific research re read institute. Outbreaks of mystery illnesses in Tanzania are also tied to uh, actions of the American biolaboratories. Russia has additional grounds to say, to speak about the grounds uh, for this, given the facts that were revealed of implementing uh, military biological programs by the Pentagon that violate these conventions on the soil of Ukraine. The analysis of the epidemiological state in the Ukraine shows convincingly that it's not the funding, uh, that not, not, not the funding by the list of this laboratory, it's not the program of joint research had no goals to strengthen the system of epidemiological monitoring and risk aversion uh, for the health of the government. Uh, the goals of this uh, Ukraine laboratories that were partnering and getting funds from the American military uh, agencies. They said that there are 30 of them on the, on the territory of Ukraine. They were not involved in the question of immunizing the population. As a result, this epidemiological state in Ukraine only got worse. There are lots of additional negative factors that were revealed by the Russian Parliamentary Commission of the military activities of the United States and the territory of Ukraine. We count on the results of this work would be really interesting to your parliaments. I would like to call uh, on everyone to work with, with this potential uh, to support the efforts and strengthening this condition most first of all by renewing the work on the legally binding protocols with efficient mechanisms of verification. We need to note them the matches of approaches of uh, African and Russian governments in this regards. To conclude, I would name some of the Russian initiatives to strengthen this mode. First thing is created mobile medical biological uh, regiments. It's also creating a mechanism of investigation in case of these violations and, of course, improving trust by providing by the member states information on military and biological activities outside their soil. And to conclude, I would like to say another thing, as my colleague, Mr. Pskarov, has said before me, we can partner in matters of biological safety and security to the fullest extent, as we were able to do so before, dear colleagues. My childhood was spent in a small city of Astrakhan in the 1970s, and back then, when there were colonial wars and outbreaks in Africa, and African people are fighting apartheid, our country was helping the education of African students in my city, in my universities, there were students from African countries learning and our countries was protesting against all the international platforms against the party, against the policy of apartheid and colonialism. I can assure that since then nothing has changed. We can live and work together as before for the sake and benefit of our people. Thank you very much. We give the word to the Speaker of National Assembly of the Parliament of Zimbabwe, Mr. Jacob Mudende. Mr. Mudende, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. My country's name starts with a Z. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in the alphabet is one of the last letters. So I, I was not expecting to be called upon uh, to speak now. Be that as it may, uh, moderator, dear colleagues, the subject of uh, indivisible security beckons to the fact that um, security must be viewed as a collective responsibility by humanity. To that extent, each and every individual, each and every country must see self being prepared to contribute to security as an indiv indivisible phenomenon. Um, there are three areas, or four areas, uh, moderator, that we need to look at. The first one 
is personal security or human security? Human security demands that uh, the freedoms and rights of individuals are respected. And if they are offended, the people shall rise and claim their freedoms and rights. You then have state security, which is two-pronged. The first part being a security that uh, refers to internal threats and also security that refers to external uh, threats. We have witnessed situations in Africa where a internal threat has been created by the failure of the then uh, uh, regimes to respect the rights and freedoms of the African people. And as a consequence, they did rise to claim their freedom and rights, and in the process, we had internal uh, disturbances, leading to some loss of thousands and thousands of lives during the liberation struggle. And uh, this did not only happen in uh, Africa, even in England, you had the English Civil War that ended up with uh, the crafting of the Magna Carta, the Great Charter, bringing in the importance of parliament to craft laws that protect the ordinary people in, within the English society. You had a similar situation in uh, America after their independence, 81 years down the line. There was a civil strife from 1861 to 1865 because certain citizens within the American society felt that their rights and freedoms were not respected and the war erupted for five years until uh, President Abraham Lincoln made to come up with the correct pieces of legislation to stop that, that, uh, that war and recognize the rights of the black Americans as equal citizens who had a right to vote. Originally, a mo moderator, we still have some spots where insecurity is emerging or has emerged for some time. In the Middle East, the question of the fight between Israel and Palestine still exists. And so many lives are being lost. And yet, the powers that belong to the unipolar context have not risen to the occasion to help particularly the Palestinian to claim their rights as a fully-fledged state among other states. Within the SADC context and region, we are experiencing also uh, some black spots of insecurity in the eastern part of the DRC, in the northern part of Mozambique. All these areas require attention because any part of the country that is insecure indirectly or directly has some impact on other states. We have also experienced uh, in certain countries where civilian government has been ousted by the military. And this is creating insecurity for the people. And we, who are members of the family of humanity, must rise up and assist that such uh, situations uh, do not continue to exist. And these countries must return to civilian government. It, on the international uh, level of uh, security, we have not learned from uh, the lessons of 
the um, First World War and the Second, Second World War. Uh, the United Nations Charter and the international law are being flouted. And uh, if you re will recall, for example, when uh, Britain and the United States of America invaded Iraq under the pretext that they were um, uh, weapons of mass destruction, when in fact, in the end, it turned out there was nothing. And yet, there was no sanctions against uh, these uh, uh, um, um, military uh, states. And uh, up to now, they have not been sanctioned. And yet, they are quick to issue a warrant of arrest against President uh, Putin. We want to say, uh, moderator, that parliaments have got a role. First and foremost, it is the role of ensuring that we have a constitution or constitutions that protect the freedoms and rights of the people. And parliaments must be there to protect the constitution so that there is some rule of law in our countries. Other pieces of legislation that bolster rule of law must also be protected or enacted by parliaments to ensure that there is security for the citizens. It is important that uh, we exercise extreme oversight on the executive to ensure that the monies that we pass through the budgets are used to reduce inequalities within our societies. As long as our societies remain unequal, there is room for insecurity in those countries. At the same time, the budget should be there to assist the, um, the, 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 the government where the, the state security has been violated in terms of uh, Article 51 of uh, the United Nations Charter so that that country or those countries are able to defend themselves in order to ensure that they continue to enjoy territorial sovereignty as well as state sovereignty. I'm happy that my sister from South Africa uh, did touch on parliamentary diplomacy. It is important that uh, as parliaments, we exercise parliamentary diplomacy at the bilateral level and at the multilateral level as demonstrated by the Inter-Parliamentary Union in trying to find some solution, lasting solution to the conflict that is happening in uh, Ukraine and hopefully uh, some solution be found very soon. Uh, moderator, I was not prepared to speak because I was going to come right at the end. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. You know, I've thought a lot of one fact. Maybe I will, could use some of your experience about it. As the deputy chair of the State Duma, I am not allowed to stop uh, the head of the parliament. And uh, as for the other members, as uh, we will no longer listen to the heads of the parliament, so we will be able to interrupt all other speakers if they do not stick to their time limits. Thank you very much, dear colleagues. Mr. Modende has uh, talked a lot about the lessons of the First World War and the Second World War because uh, always before the very big wars and conflicts we have seen the destruction of norms of international law and now we have seen it in uh, the situation in uh, Iraq uh, and with the Minsk agreements um, when uh, 
the norms of international law were violated, and this led to conflict. So we agree with the necessity to find peace and security, and with the necessity to learn lessons of the First and the Second World Wars, which were not properly learned despite the Nuremberg Tribunal, which took place. And uh, together with our partners, we are going to remind the international community about these lessons and the voice of the parliament is extremely important here that the respect of international norms will allow us to keep peace and security. Now I'd like to give the floor to Mr. Chagush, the vice head of the, of, uh, the party fraction of the uh, United Russia. Dear colleagues, thank you very much uh, for your attention. I'd like to say that I represent the Caucasus region, and it's a very, very multinational region as well as the African continent. And we have a lot of experience in uh, in uh, restoring security and peace, and that is why uh, why uh, Russia has uh, all the necessary experience in this sphere. I would like to say that 15 or 20 years ago, we uh, found uh, out that one and the, the first. Uh, Islam State was supposed to be built on the territory of uh, the Caucasus if it wasn't for the initiative of uh, the Russian Federation when Vladimir Putin was uh, in um, the position of the vice um, minister, uh, vice, prim vice first minister of the Russian Federation. And uh, each time when uh, any country starts uh, negotiating with another country, it is very important uh, for us to respect the national interests of each of each uh, party. And today in the world there are two practices, two, two ways to protect the national interests. I will talk about the USA and the Russian Federation. So in the Russian Federation, when it comes to uh, important uh, struggle against the international terrorism, even not on the territory of our state, uh, as uh, it was in the situation in Syria, we always thought about their needs, and uh, we always thought about uh, their neighbors. We kept negotiating with Iraq, uh, with Turkey, and all other neighboring states, which were very much interested in uh, the development of the situation on the territory of uh, Syria. What uh, the United States do now? First of all, they protect their own national interest without paying attention to other states and the rights of other peoples, which uh, are, of course, eager to take part in these negotiations, in uh, the struggle with the terrorism, and uh, in the struggle with other challenges. So the United States of America led the world to the conflicts which we are facing now, and to the fact that we have to restore everything that has been done uh, that had been done earlier in terms of. Um, security and uh, indivisibility. So the security is one of the ideolo ideological concepts uh, that is extremely important for discussion nowadays. And uh, we think that uh, the only matter that can stop the situation in the world that's, uh, that started about 15 years ago when the norms and frameworks stopped uh, being uh, efficient uh, on the territories of different states. And uh, so conflicts are still going on. They keep being very global because of the con interaction of all countries. And I would like to address to our honest uh, partners uh, on the African continent. And I'm absolutely assured that only being honest with each other will be able to get to, to the common and uh, beneficial situation. And uh, talking about the uh, Caucasus, I'd like to say that together with the African uh, parliamentarians, we are able to meet locally, to meet um, in order to create counter-terrorist counter uh, actions, uh, to create special campaigns uh, which would be active on the territories of the African states and the Caucasus, uh, the region of Russia. And uh, one more thing that I'd like to add is that I have uh, a proposal that we should deal uh, 
urgently with uh, the shade market of arms and think after the campaign led by NAT, after the fact that so many arms have been uh, taken to the territory of Ukraine, we have never had uh, th so many arms widespread on the territories of the countries, including Africa and uh, Middle East. And uh, I think it is one of the most important questions to deal with today, and it will lead uh, to certain results uh, in the mid-term uh, times. And uh, we should talk a lot with uh, the African countries to find a solution to this problem. And uh, I call you to get back to this point. And I think that the organizers of our today's conference will help us with this. Thank you very much, dear colleagues. Thank you very much. Uh, we'd like to go on uh, with um, our assembly, with our meeting today. And uh, I also like to notice that we talked to the representatives of different countries who said to us that we are under pressure and uh, that uh, Russia is Russia is experiencing some sanctions. And we were said not to go to Moscow. and. Uh, those who didn't come, who decided to follow the advice of the Western countries, would absolutely not be our partners. And uh, we are welcoming all of you who managed to come here despite all the pressure of uh, other states. So it's a win-win position. Everybody wins uh, when uh, you come here to Russia to use the opportunities we have now. So I'd like to give uh, the floor to Mr. Jiraki, uh, the uh, vice uh, head of the parliament of the Republic of Chad. So please, the floor is yours. Monsieur le Président de la Douma, Monsieur le Président du Conseil de la Fédération, Mesdames et Messieurs. Dear Chairman, dear moderators, dear deputies of the Russian State Duma, I'll try to stick to the time limits. Uh, unfortunately, our chairman was unable to come, but he allowed me to represent him here and to have the floor at this meeting. And I'm very honored to talk in front of such a high audience as a representative of uh, the Parliament of Chad and on behalf of our chairman and uh, on behalf of our people, as I'd like to express my warm gratitude uh, to the organizers of this conference 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 sorry and uh, i would like to thank mr putin for all the efforts uh, for organizing this conference it's uh, already the second con conference which uh, is um, organized and we are very happy to take part in it and the main topic of uh, the plenary session and of the sections that uh, of the round tables that are held today is uh, the security and all of these uh, topics uh, make us think about even more serious things such as the support of science and education, our response to economic measures, our input in uh, other different challenges. And the delegation of the Parliament of uh, the Republic of Chad is uh, taking part in this uh, parliamentary conference for the first time. So I would like to talk a bit more about uh, our situation, how this period is uh, going on, and how we are trying to cooperate with the Russian Federation, including the interparliamentary connections. In fact, it's uh, the, uh, the period which is quite uh, difficult for our our state and the head of our country died, uh, was killed, in fact, uh, some time ago, and sisters and brothers of our country are trying to go on with the traditions of our leadership. And um, during this um, period, uh, during, during this um, 
transition period, uh, we are trying to in to make the dialogue with different forces, with different experts and uh, representatives of different states. And uh, we are going to organize the presidential and parliamentary elections so when our country will be able to get back on the constitutional grounds. In 1964, we created uh, diplomatic uh, res uh, relationships between the Soviet Union and the Republic of Chad. And since then, we have uh, been cooperating in different fields. We signed a number of agreements, uh, including uh, the agreement of um, uh, 2000 uh, of uh, the um, credit, uh, some kind of credit agreement of uh, understanding uh, the reasons of uh, cultural sphere and so on. And uh, Russia is now dealing a lot uh, with the preparation of our civil and military offices in the Republic of Chad. And uh, we are very much grateful to the Russian Federation for giving them uh, money for being able to go on with their studies in Russia. And we have also created a working group of uh, the cooperation between Chad and uh, Russia. And we are willing to go on with this cooperation very much. I, first of all, would like to say that uh, in the new world, in the situation, in this transitional period that our country is in now, we would like to go on with the cooperation where that had been uh, that had been uh, created before. And uh, we have a special commission, the Ministry of uh, Education and Innovations, and our parliament, our authorities, unfortunately, do not have enough uh, resources and financial resources for the development of uh, this uh, scientific uh, cooperation. So that is why for us it is so important to get to know the experience of the Russian Federation, the best practices that are used in the Russian Federation. As for the economic cooperation, we are also trying to deal with this matter. As for the legislature, legislative activity, we also try to take the best example from the, of the Russian Federation. And uh, our country is now in a difficult situation because of the challenges that uh, are in front of us. We have to develop our industries with the unnecessary access to investitions and technologies. And uh, that is why together with our colleagues from the Council of Federation and the State Duma, we're trying to get on track uh, of cooperation. We are very much thankful for their help in the, our economic problems. And uh, as uh, for the indivisible, indivisible uh, security, I would like to say the charter today is uh, in, faced uh, with uh, very many different problems. Uh, in terms of uh, Sahel region and in uh, the Sahara Desert and in the Sahel region, there are very many touristic groups which are quite active. And in 2016, Boko Haram, the organization Boko Haram, committed a terrorist attacks in the center of our capital. They were also able to make other terrorist attacks uh, in the region of uh, Chad district, uh, which is uh, quite, uh, which is quite. Uh, difficult uh, place to live in because there we can see lots of uh, representations of Boko Haram organization which are very active and nowadays uh, the um, leadership of uh, the Chad Republic are trying to cooperate with other countries in order to protect our sovereignty and uh, to provide us a better support in our relationships with Cameron. We are also trying to strengthen our legislature, we adopt different kinds of laws which um, are made uh, together and developed together with uh, our fathers and with our brothers in other countries. All of that is uh, 
the opportunity for us to keep struggling against uh, our problems. That is why we are very much grateful for support of the Russian Federation, for their support of the countries of Sahel region, and uh, we are absolutely sure that we will be able to to find a better way out of the situation, that we will use uh, this opportunity to create a common future for our states. We have been developing for a long time our interparliamentary cooperation between both uh, between the Chad and both uh, chambers of the Russian parliament according to the traditions that uh, have existed between our states for common future and common common grounds. And finally, at the end of my speech, of the end of my presentation, I would like to say that I'm very much optimistic about the development of our relationships. And this conference allows us uh, to see the strengthening of relation between our sister countries. And I am very much welcome the Russian parliament and the state Duma to support our African colleagues on the constitutional reform for the economic development of our countries. Thank you very much for your attention. You can count on our support. And now I'd like to give the floor to Mr. Diryugin, Vice Head of uh, the Department of Perspective Planning of the country of uh, the company Ross Abron Export. Dear ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for this possibility to to give my presentation in front of such a high assembly. And I'd like to say from the very beginning that uh, if uh, beforehand we've talked a lot about the military situation and social situation, I'd like to stop on um, the on uh, the military and technical aspects of uh, this work. I'd like to talk to you first of all about our company. It is uh, the organization that uh, is uh, the state exporter of the best uh, types of military equipment and services uh, that have been created in the Russian Federation. For many years, we have been in close cooperation with the countries of African region. And our priority is uh, supporting our partners in achieving stability and uh, safety. Russia has uh, had lots of experience in this sphere, and I'm ready to share this experience with our partners. Global threats to international security are one of uh, the parts of uh, today's agendas, uh, including terrorism, which uh, can be seen both in uh, external and internal affairs. We can see now new outbreaks of terrorist activities. We can see that the terrorists are very well equipped and they have all the necessary equipment to provide uh, a better support for their agencies in the land. And they have lots of uh, information and lots of different uh, equipment to go on with their, with their activity. They have a very modern transport, uh, artillery, and uh, they have uh, the necessary clothing. And talking about transport, I would first of all mention all types of transport uh, on wheels and air transport, and even terrorists have a submarine uh, kind of transport. And it is very difficult to counteract this kind of uh, terrorist groups. Uh, the only thing to do it is to equip our forces, our enforcement agencies with all necessary things. So thus, Russia is now able to provide uh, all the necessary types of uh, Russian military equipment and technologies. For the first uh, time, we have started sharing our technologies not so long ago. We are ready to start um, producing the best types of our military production on the territory of our partners and clients. Another threat that I'd like to mention, and which is quite important now, and uh, that it appears in um, uh, African countries, is uh, transborder crime, as the countries are very rich uh, in uh, the resources. Uh, so we can see uh, different types of, of crimes, of uh, transborder crimes, which uh, put a threat on the security of uh, different countries. Thus, in, uh, on the territory of um, 
on the territory of uh, African countries, the production of of, uh, of drugs uh, grew by uh, 11 percent, and uh, all the drugs have been uh, have grown, the production of all other drugs have grown up to 5%. And we think that only uh, a very good control of uh, the borders can uh, help us to achieve uh, the security of the whole world. Russian Federation has the longest boundaries, the longest frontiers in the world, and we have different modern types of equipment of transborder control, including the equipment which allows without any contact with the person or with uh, the equipment to control what is in uh, the suitcases, what is uh, in the transport containers of different kind of uh, transport, including the airplanes, uh, cars and so on. I would like to say that uh, I'd like to notice uh, once again that these uh, types of equip equipment do not require any contact, so they do not put any obstacles uh, in uh, this sphere of trade. Moreover, we are now very much interested in controlling the situation in uh, the places of mass, um, of um, massive frequency of people, and uh, now uh, our partners are very much interested in this kind of uh, of uh, equipment. We are now dealing with the transport security and uh, video, different video services. And I'd like to say that our equipment is now able to fix and uh, to see all kinds of uh, violations of uh, rules on the roads. And we are one of the leaders in these spheres. And uh, today's system of video uh, video surveillance uh, allows us to see the greatest number of violations of uh, law in uh, on the roads. So we provide uh, these kind of systems to our partners. I'd like to say that uh, during the last um, last uh, ten years uh, in Russia, we've managed to prevent. Uh, more than 200 terrorist attacks and uh, the crime in our countries is reduced now by 20 percent. And uh, moreover, different uh, unlawful activities which, uh, un which now take place are usually managed through the internet. So the terrorist gets uh, the order to start his activity from the net. And this leads to the fact that we start being afraid of using this uh, civilization uh, asset. And uh, thus, we managed to create special software that allows us to control different kind of resources, including open resources like chats, like uh, different internet sites. So just to say all the resources of the internet. and. Uh, if you want to get to know all of our achievements closer, if you are very much interested in them, we invite you to come to the Forum Russia Africa, which will take place in summer, and uh, you will be able to see all the examples of our achievements there. Thank you very much for your attention. So the Forum will take place in July, and we are very much uh, expecting you to see here. So in fact, you could come in uh, July and stay in Russia till September to be able to see everything. So I'd like now to give the floor to the member of Senate of Madagascar, Mr. Fernand. So please, Mr. Fernand, the floor is yours. Monsieur le Président, chers collègues parlementaires, Excellences, Mesdames et Messieurs. Dear colleagues uh, in peace, and uh, first of all, I would like to use this opportunity in order to congratulate uh, Mr. Chairman of the Russian State Duma and all the members of the Parliament of Russian Federation from the name of the Chairman of the Senate of Madagascar and from the name of the whole delegation of Madagascar for organizing this interparliamentary uh, conference. And I would also like uh, to express deep gratitude uh, for the warm uh, welcome that was given to us uh, and uh, the world and the, the topic of peace and security 
touches all of us and lies within our shared area of concern. Parliament members have to do everything in order to safeguard uh, peace and security on national, regional and international level. We, as members of the parliament, are the speaker, are the vox populi, and we need to protect uh, the people from the escalation of violence that threats and menaces uh, well-being and uh, our quality of life. This conference, Russia, Africa, is organized at a very needed moment because in the existing context, African countries have to mobilize their efforts and the uh, efforts uh, in solidarity in order to safeguard peace and world and uh, African people have to be fully fledged equal participant of international events. They have to mobilize in order to uh, protect this worthy goal that is uh, global peace. Here we, as members of the parliament, are responsible. We bear this lot of responsibility. We need to use uh, parliamentary approaches when other opportunities and, cap and capacities are exhausted or are no longer effective. Mad Madagascar is a very big island that is located right between Asia and Africa, and thus we, sh we hold a very strategic uh, position in the Indian Ocean. That is why we always vouched for sincere negotiations and talks full of uh, f full of full of uh, equity and equality in African continent and then any point of the world and uh, they are we're all part of an interconnected world where the dialogue has to always be top priority the means to solve any problems in order to avoid violence because personal conflicts uh, and misconceptions impact the safety and security of the population all over the world and for once again uh, as parliament members of the African countries we need to make our commitment our personal commitment in providing safe and security all over the world thank you very much for your attention thank you very much now we give the floor to our IT guru Natalia Kaspersky President of InfoWatch Company, chairman, uh, chairman of the board of uh, Association of uh, Develop of uh, Domestic Software Developers. I'll try to be as fast as possible. Thank you very much for the word you've given me. I want to speak about digital sovereignty. Digital sovereignty in the modern era, in the modern age, in the age where information technologies dominate all areas of life, became a thing of great significance. What is digital sovereignty? In essence, digital sovereignty is the capacity and the right of the government to define on its own and to decide what has to happen in its digital space. More probably, it looks like uh, as fundamental a right as the right to form your own, to shape your own policy and economy. However, recently, and the further the goal, the more it develops the IT technologies, the more difficult it becomes for the countries to provide our own digital sovereignty. And in general, in the global context in the modern world, there are almost, uh, almost exclusively three countries that can say that they've reached uh, the point of providing information technology to themselves. First of all, uh, it's the United States of America. Secondly, it's China. And thirdly, it put, and the third place I put Russia. Russia this year faced an unprecedented challenge in its information areas, and uh, as due to the sanctions, a lot of foreign companies left Russia. And just for your understanding, from the point of view of equipment, this is IBM, Intel, IMD, HP, Epson, Dell. Hitachi and other companies, and the consultant, the all the big four, they uh, entirely left Russia. The platform Kyocera, Amazon, Netflix also left Russia. Booking.com services, Salesforce, and others, payment systems completely left. Uh, the web companies, internet companies, and Google partially left our software. Uh, companies uh, left us almost exclusively. The biggest one is Oracle, Cisco, uh, uh, Autodesk, Microsoft, and even uh, open source systems such as GitHub and Atlas, and also left Russia. Can you imagine these brands? And please now imagine to yourself that they are all leaving your country. Can you imagine this? My, there is no Microsoft, there is no Cisco, there is no Oracle, there is nothing. What happened to the Russian Federation? The answer is nothing. 
we were able to survive this period. We replaced almost all software solutions to a significant extent, especially on the critically important objects. Government worked really quickly, and the Ministry of Digital Development instantly came up with a plan to shift to uh, local to, to, lo to local software products. Uh, Russia started this process in 2015 that came uh, with a plan, uh, local plan on import replacement. And uh, by 2022, we had lots of uh, our own programs, and uh, there are now 16,000 2020 software products uh, uh, of domestic products. It's quite a lot. And uh, in terms of software, we can, I can say that we can replace almost everything in equipment. Hard, in hardware, we still have lots of work to do, but we can do a lot of things along with our Chinese comrades and regarding regarding uh, the subsequent actions uh, in Russia we do have a plan to uh, replace uh, all the solutions in critical infrastructure objects by 2025 in hardware and in software how can it be used by the African countries generally speaking we are open and here I represent the software developer association of our country which is the biggest developer associations and we are open for cooperation we are open for partnership with African countries we are ready to provide the following our software solutions its source codes we are ready to provide the source codes we are ready to provide training and education of employees to not only use these solutions but to modify them to improve them to upgrade them for the sake of the government's needs. The majority of American software solutions are shipped as a rule with an as-is license without the rule, without the right to modify and uh, change anything. This is categorically forbidden. We give this right, we provide this right, and we'll, we'll also teach you how to do it. We are ready to do so. And of course, uh, open source codes, what does it mean? It means that you can take a look that there is no hidden, uh, there is no hidden back doors and no remote uh, control points because the majority of these uh, modern products, of course, contain remote management and control capabilities. Some uh, people have already mentioned it today. Remote control means that they see everything that's going on in this government, that's going on in this specific company or at this specific enterprise. So, Thus, Russian Federation, from its own experience, having survived this uh, accident of foreign products leaving our market, is now working within uh, its own borders to promote our technologies further, to start exporting them to other countries. And I think that price is also negotiable. So come to us. We welcome you, and thank you very much. Now, we give the floor to Mr. Umar Zubairu, Managing Director of Rufa Universal Concept, Nigeria. Is Mr. Umar Zubairu with us? It happens uh, when the person is okay. Now we invite the, the CEO. Is that so? Please, you have the floor. Mr. Ezelwuba. Dobry wieczór. Дамы и господа, я хочу that every nation is interested in. So, indivisible security can be used when the nations agree to work together on the security treats of their nations. Here, I will use Nigeria as a case study uh, because I'm from Nigeria. And secondly, 
African as a, as a continent is made up of 54 countries with different security structures. So I will center my speech on Nigeria as a nation, and I will outline two frameworks of securities that will help nations to work indivisibly. First, I will talk of physical security. Secondly, I will talk of psychological security. So the physical security refers to the measures and the process that are put in place to protect people, assets, and resources from threats, theft, violence, and damage. It will be very essential for each country, countries to have a strong agreement on how to form alliance and deal with it. Secondly, I will talk on the psychological security. The psychological is the practice of protecting humans from being manipulated or exploited through media or environment. For example, the special operation in Ukraine is a more physical operation to the Russian Federation, but in the West, it is more of psychological operation. Also, major social media such as Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, etc. was used by the West to psychologically manipulate the minds of people from reality. Had it been every country has their own social network, just like we contact in Russia, it will also serve as an essential tool to also sanitate the environment. So parliamentary plays a crit uh, critical role in enhancing an indivisible security by providing an institution or creating a law that will help the investors that is going to invest in any of the security-related projects to have a favorable environment. The indivisible security can also be very effective if the companies that are providing the instrument has a plant or physical location where they, are, where they will be producing the intent to have the indivisible security, the intent countries that they want to have the indivisible security with. So the two nations can agree and also create more job opportunities for the host nation. The, uh, the parliamentary also, the parliamentary of both countries needs to have a timely agreement on how long the indivisible security will last. It can be subject to extension. I want to thank everyone and the parliamentary for giving me this opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We give the floor to Igor Alexander Shmanov. Uh, Mr. Shmanov and I will continue the presentation by Natalia Kaspersky. I would like to say that uh, this, history, this history with the digital sovereignty is very important for parliaments because at the current moment we see what's happening in the world, which is the transfer of power, an invisible uh, transfer of power to a certain new digital class. So power in the world is being taken by people who have access uh, to digital technologies and personal data of citizens. In, cer in a cer to a certain extent, it uh, looks like the penetra penetration of toxic uh, threats because uh, these trans-border technologies, uh, they're almost in all the countries, uh, American technologies are dominating and it looks like that this uh, power, the authority, fluctuates to not only IT guys and system administrators, but mostly to the American specialists, the American employees, and American developers, uh, and American digital platforms. This is indeed a very important story because power is transferred uh, without choice. It's transferred factually, not like government fabulous get it, not like government officials get it f uh, according to mandate, uh, an order, or decree. This is a creeping. This is a creeping process that allows to capture entire countries to colonize them. So we're talking about new era of digital colonization. We see it. We observe it. And the majority of countries, unfortunately, are defenseless. They lack technologies to defend, and they have no transparency. They can't even see sometimes what's going on in the digital space because there are no tools to do so. Such tools are, of course, developed in the world 
they are developed in the United States of America. There are systems of monitoring all these digital platforms. Besides the majority of these digital platforms, uh, Americans, they just uh, give all the uh, data and the American intelligence, and they create these social networks. Uh, and of course, the system is existing in Israel and Canada, and uh, there are, I think, there are nowhere else, but in Russia, we are now working on this, we are doing this, because uh, we've experienced a gigantic information hit uh, in relation to our military, special military operation in Ukraine. All digital special forces of the West are working against us now, and we started to develop and produce our own countermeasures, our mechanism of counteracting this. In this regard, so we do have good experience uh, on blocking Western systems and platforms and replacing them uh, to the amount that they exist there up to the, the monitoring system analysis and counteracting all this. What, what am I implying? I'm implying that, as Natalia said, that we have the power to work with our partners on providing them means to create and achieve digital sovereignty. This is a turnkey sovereignty, a uh, keeper sovereignty that was mentioned by Natalia Kaspersky, and IT sovereignty it needs to be done, because nowadays those who don't protect their own digital space might lose, and might lose the usual sovereignty, because digital sovereignty now is a hole, is a back door through which they used to hack the usual sovereignty. Information, IT domination is uh, similar to air domination in the wars of the past, so I urge you to think on how can we jointly do uh, the rehabilitation process of this digital sovereignty for our partner countries, given the fact that we've always helped African countries to get the sovereignty with all forces that were at our disposal over the last 50 years. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you for your speech, and now I'd like to give the floor to the representatives of uh, Algeria. Please, the floor is all yours. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, for the possibility to talk in front of this assembly. I'm going to talk today about the indivisible security and about the parliamentarian efforts in this sphere. There is no doubt that national parliaments play a very important role in assuring the security of each and every country. And uh, this uh, could happen both uh, via the development of new legislation that protects uh, national interests or by the international cooperation in this sphere. In order to ensure security, you also have to deal with other partners to create this cooperation, this special environment that would allow you to protect your country from different threats it could be a subject of. And uh, in this case, I would like to say that Algeria is uh, one of the states that has its own point of view that was developed in 2005 and uh, which presumes uh, that the uh, Parliament of Algeria plays a very important role in the development and in the protection of national interests. Here we are also discussing the crisis and the crisis management and uh, other important uh, challenges that our countries are facing. Undoubtedly, the parliamentary cooperation is uh, a very important sphere of cooperation in general, which uh, should be worked on for the protection of the whole world. This allows us to protect our citizens, our peoples, against uh, transborder crime, against terrorism, and other challenges that we are facing. And uh, 
through cooperation and counteraction different crimes, we can ensure mutual respect and uh, avoid this interference from the part of other states. The cooperation helps us to counteract different kinds of crises that we have to deal with together as partners. And uh, through this cooperation, we will be able to avoid the use of force in case of different disagreements between our states. Dear colleagues, Algeria has a special commission which deals with crisis management in different cases when a country are stuck in the kind of crisis which cannot be overcome alone. And this commission also deals with the migration crisis, which are now extremely relevant for the European countries and for the countries of uh, the northern Africa. And in order to ensure peace and to, to recreate uh, peace between the countries, the parliament of our country encourages all of you to solidarity, to exercising the rights of our countries and respecting the rights of others. We also encourage you to protect your borders in order to stop the transnational crime and terrorist attacks. Thank you very much for your attention. Now I'd like to give the floor to Mr. Rechkov, the head of the Parliamentary Commission of the international affairs and of uh, migration politics and uh, the cooperation with uh, our representatives abroad. Please, uh, the floor is yours. Hello, good evening to everybody. Thank you very much, uh, dear moderators, for the opportunity to talk. And uh, I'd like also to welcome all of our partners from African countries, dear participants of the round table. I think all of you know very well that the principle of indivisible security is um, connected uh, with uh, the security of each and every country and uh, of uh, the principle of the impossibility to strengthen your sovereignty through the sovereignty of other states. And uh, unfortunately, very many countries do not understand uh, the essence of this principle, which uh, puts an effect on uh, the development of the architecture in the relationships between our partners. And we can see that the Western countries understand this principle quite in a quite different way. Unfortunately, there are very many attempts to use another policy of uh, the Western countries to keep uh, their predominant position in the world. In the historical context, the use of uh, these uh, rights has been unable without uh, the uh, efforts of uh, Western countries. And uh, today we're dealing with uh, such conflicts as uh, Georgia and Ukraine. Moreover, nowadays, the representatives of Western countries are trying to interfere with uh, our sovereignty and uh, include uh, in uh, the process of uh, cooperation or such countries as Finland and Norway. Moreover, they are trying to shake the situation in Ukraine even more. We also see that NATO is more and more interested in uh, using its powers and pressures in the territory of uh, the Pacific uh, countries, of the Pacific uh, region, and thus uh, the politics of the um, United States uh, in terms of Taiwan is quite uh, provocative. And uh, the community of uh, states could not 
but respond to these um, matters. Together with Russia, Belarus is very much interested in recreating peace and security. Unfortunately, we are very much uh, disturbed uh, with the current situation, which is close to the Caribbean crisis that uh, took place earlier. We should learn the lessons of previous wars. In the Second World War, we left three million people. Every third person, every first uh, citizen of the Soviet Union died. And um, we are soon going to mark the anniversary, uh, the anniversary of the tra tragedy that happened in the, the in Hatinya when uh, the uh, the faces uh, burnt uh, women and uh, older people in uh, a barn and today Hatin is a symbol of uh, Belarus of our of our participation in the second world war our country has always been a donor of regional security. We are for the world without wars and conflicts, without violence. We are eager to develop bilateral, multilateral cooperation between all our partners that would be based on the cooperation and security, taking into account the interests of all states. Under the aegis of uh, the UN and of the international organizations, Belarus has been organize a different kind of conferences at, at a very high level on uh, the point of collective security. Our country has been a platform for negotiations uh, between uh, Russia, Ukraine, and other countries uh, in terms of Minsk agreements. We've um, given our territory in order to find a consensus in uh, this process. and. Uh, it doesn't matter that on the Western countries they are very difficult with understanding how how important uh, it is to create this uh, indivisible security for everybody. We can see that uh, the people everywhere need uh, to recharge the system which has been existing and uh, to renew this system as soon as possible. I would like to draw the attention of uh, all of the participants uh, to the initiative of the president of uh, Belarus, Mr. Lukashenko, about uh, the um, creation of a new platform for dialogue for all states uh, like in uh, San Francisco and uh, Belarus is uh, going to be the head of uh, the um, ensemble of countries of the collective treaty and we are going to work a lot on the peace and security in Eurasia. We would like all experts to draw attention to the importance of uh, military conflicts and uh, which is uh, which has become the reality for everybody. Thank you very much, dear colleagues. Unfortunately, we have to stop uh, now, and uh, I'd like to give uh, the floor to Mr. Sabari, the first uh, deputy chair of the head of the parliament of Morocco, and I'm very sorry that some of you did not have an opportunity to speak to the audience because you're going to have a wonderful walk uh, in uh, in Moscow by night and you have, will also have a wonderful dinner on board. Thank you very much and the floor is yours. On behalf of the Parliament of uh, Morocco, we would like to thank uh, the uh, Parliament of uh, Russian Federation and uh, the State Duma for their very warm welcome. And I think you have chosen very right topics. And the first topic uh, I would like to deal with today is closely connected with the security on uh, the African continent. The countries of uh, the African continent will never will never support those people who have their hands in blood and those who are trying to teach us democracy. Those are countries that have been colonized and have have been colonizers of the African continent and uh, Fortunately, African countries managed uh, to say them goodbye, and African countries would like to uh, to be respected and to be equal to other countries of the world. We would like to we would like our peoples to be respected uh, everywhere, and uh, we 
need our states to be very strong and not to deal with quasi-states. And that is why we are now about to face terrorist attacks. Thank you very much. We are also against any interference in our domestic affairs. Thank you very much for your attention. Dear guests, this is this, the end of our round table. Please, will you, dear colleague, will you sum up uh, the results of uh, today's conference? Yes, I would like to thank uh, all of our participants. I think that the talk we had today was very important and we dealt with lots of different aspects uh, about the about the uh, indivisibility, uh, indivisibility of our security, and we managed to, to give the floor to the speakers of parliament and to different experts in different fields, and we managed to have a look at this problem from different sides, coming to some important conclusions. Uh, the conclusions which later on be put on paper and uh, on the decisions on the finishing document of uh, this parliamentary conference and which also be discussed during the summit of Russia Africa I would like to say that uh, I'd like to say that all uh, participants today talked about non-interference in domestic affairs and the creation of a system that would allow to respect uh, the rights of all participants of uh, today's uh, world community in order to create uh, one single world for everybody. I think it is a very good uh, finish for our discussion. And uh, moreover, I would like to remind you that we are going to discuss all of these topics later on in July and during the summit Russia-Africa. Thank you very much and good evening to everybody.